네, 안녕하세요. 어, 오늘 어, 수업을 어, 녹화를 하도록 하겠습니다. 어, 저번에 제가 그 세컨 타픽을 어, A Little Bit Later 올린다고 했는데 어, 이게 쉽지는 않았네요. 음, 어쨌든 세미나도 준비를 해야 되고 <웃음> 해가지고 음, 좀 늦게 이제 올리게 되었습니다. 음, 참 이게 그 녹화를 해서 음, 수업을 하는 거라서 뭐 저도 어, 최선을 다하고 있긴 하지만은 이렇게 이제 쉽게 진행이 되지는 않고 있고요. 음, 뭐 여러분들도 지금 제가 <웃음> 어, 만나지를 못하고 있으니까는 참 강의가 어떻게 이제 잘 되고 있는지 참 여러분들이 어떻게 이해를 하고 있는지 참 피드백을 이제 받을 수가 없어가지고. 좀 어려운 것 같긴 합니다. 음, 어쨌든 이제 이게 대학원 수업이고 대학원 수업이긴 하지만 그래도 이제 여러분들이 이제 컴퓨터 아키텍처 구조에 대해서 음, 좀 이해를 할수 있고 또 이제 그 약간 이제 어드밴스드한 그런 아키텍처를 여러분들한테 소개하고 그런 이슈들을 이제 소개하는 그런 이렇게 어, 디자인된 수업이기 때문에. 음, 어쨌든 여러분들에게 이제 도움이, 잘 도움이 되면 좋을 것 같고요. 어쨌든 이제 이게 녹화 수업이기 때문에 여러분들의 그런 스케줄에 맞춰가지고, 어, 잘, 그, 플레이, 어, 렉처 비디오를 잘 들었으면 좋겠습니다. 뭐 저도 이제, 어, 약간은 지금 바쁠 때는 좀 늦게 올라올 수도 있는데요. 네, 잘 올리도록 그렇게 하겠습니다. 그래서 우리가 이제 저번 주까지는 이제 약간, 그 CPU 프로세서를 이제 다루게 되는 어 약간 이제 테크놀로지, 그러니까 CMOS 테크놀로지에 대한 그런 이슈들을 조금 이제 다뤘습니다. 뭐 파워라든지 그 다음에 이제 스케일링 이슈, 그 다음에 이제 릴라블리티 이슈 이런 부분들에 대해서 이제 다루게 되었죠. 어 컴퓨터 구조라는 것은 이제 하드웨어랑 이제 소프트웨어 인터페이스, 그다음 이제 컴퓨터 하드웨어의 시스템. 이런 부분들을 이제 다루기 있기 때문에 컴퓨터 하드웨어는 어, 엄밀히 말하면 이제 칩, 그다음 반도체, 또 VLSI로 이루, 이루어져 있죠. 뭐 그렇기 때문에 우리가 이제 뭐 여러 가지 컴퓨터 아키텍처의 여러 가지 영역이 있긴 하지만은 뭐 이런 성능이라든지 아니면 파워, 그다음에 리라블리티를 이해를 하기 위해서는 이렇게 하드웨어적인 특성, 특히나 이제 그 세미컨덕터의 프로퍼티, 캐릭터리스틱스를 잘 이해를 하고 있어야 됩니다. 어, 그리고 이제 우리가, 이런 참 여러분들이 이제 리서치에 우리를, 어디를 이제 포커스를 해서 리서치를 하는지, 뭐 제가 이제 잘알 수는 없지만은, 뭐, 이런, 사실 우리가 이제 컴퓨터라는 시스템, 사실 하드웨어에서 돌아가고 그 위에서 소프트웨어를 돌리는 그런 시스템이잖아요. 그래서 이제 하드웨어를 이해를 하고 있다라고 하면은, 그 하드웨어적, 하드웨어적인 이슈에 대해서 연구 주제들을 여러분들이 잘 찾을 수 있을 것이라고 이제 생각이 듭니다. 어, 그래서 이번 시간에는 어, 이제 아키텍처, 특히 그 정통적인 아키텍처로 이제 넘어가려고 합니다. 그래서 그 스타트는, 스타트 포인트는 인스트럭션 셋 아키텍처로 이제 우리가 시작을 하려고 합니다. 음, 사실은 뭐 ISA 뭐 인스트럭션 셋 아키텍처는 여러분들이 어, 언더그레이주에이트 코스에서 또 이제 다루었기 때문에 뭐 익숙해져 익숙한 그런 파트에서도 있긴 하지만은 그래도 이제 리뷰를 한다는 그런 마음으로 또 이제 진행을 하려 하, 하려고 하고 있고요. 또 이제 그 인스트럭션 셋 아키텍처는 이제 우리가 이제 뒤에 배울 그런 하드웨어 아키텍처 이제 뭐 아로보드 프로세서나 이제 파이프라인 아키텍처 이런 부분들을 이해를 하기 위해서는 또 필요한 부분이기 때문에 뭐 이렇게 소개를 우선은 하려고 합니다. 또이 부분은 이제 그 텍스트 부분에서 이제 챕터 3 부분에 대한 해당되는 그런 부분이고요. 챕터 3가 좀 아마 길 거예요. 뭐 그렇지만 그그 스타트 포인트 앞 부분 챕터들을 이제 다루고 있습니다. So let's talk about the instruction set architecture of computer hardware. So what is the instruction set architecture? So 
Now we start from the instruction set architecture. So, oh, it doesn't work. Come on now, where is the course? Here. Okay. So this is the outline of the uh, this lecture video. So the first, I will I will explain what instruction set architecture is, and then also I will talk about the instruction types and the API code. There is some basic API instruction types, and then we will uh, mention the instruction operand, and then I will briefly talk about the exception and the exception handling. So actually, this exception handling is very important for computer hardware design because the exception handling is a very complex process. And then actually uh, the hardware implement the difficulty of the hardware implementation depends on the, the level of the exception handling. And then <clears throat> I will briefly explain about the risk and CISC. I, I think it's a very uh, famous uh, computer. Uh, topic in the computer systems, and I I believe the most of you uh, already knows about the, this risk and CISC. <laughs> and then I will briefly show what instruction set architecture will be used in the course. And then actually this course used some basic instruction set architecture. It's not x86. It's not kind of a risk some other MIPS or risk five or some other ARM instructions. So, but this course will use the very basic instructions based on the risk. So let's, let's talk about the instruction set architecture on the, the computer system. So instruction set architecture is called ISA. And then what are the uh, very uh, two famous instruction set architecture. I believe um, you already know. So actually the two, the most, two most famous are, uh, instruction set architecture in the, in the real world is x86 and ARM. x86 ISA is uh, widely used for uh, server computers uh, and then uh, personal computers like a laptop and desktop PC. And then how about the ARM architecture, ARM ISA? Uh, ARM processors is ARM processors are widely used for mobile process, mobile devices because the ARM processors are benefit. Uh, ARM processors are have uh, advantages on the power consumption issues. So this ARM processor is widely used for mobile devices. And then also this x86 and the ARM processor has the different type of instruction set, stru instru instruction set structure. So let's talk about the ISA in the computer system. So this picture, this figure shows the uh, layers of the computer system. We already uh, mentioned these figures in the, the first, first time of the class. So what is the highest layer? It's an application, it's a user application, actually. So user apps, I will try to use the tablet and then a pen system. So this application is the, the, the highest layer of the computer system. So that means that the normal users uh, utilize the, these applications. And then under the, these applications, the uh, this application, uh, there is a compiler and library layers. So actually, the this application is written in high level language called HLL. And what's the example of a high level language? It's a Python or C. So, and then what is high level language should be compiled into machine language first assembly and then machine language. So, and then when uh, there are many, uh, a bunch of libraries to support uh, some specific uh, uh, operation of the uh, software, so, uh, so this application should be compiled with the, the compiler. And then the, some libraries are included in this compiled code. So under the, this uh, user application, there is the compiler layer and then on the, this, and then the operating system. 
So operating system is the some interface between software and hardware. And the operating system is used for managing hardware resources and memory system and some other issues. And then this is the some software part. So the system is built with software, not hardware. Then under this software part, there is the instruction set architecture. So what is the instruction set architecture? It's the some contraction between hardware and software. So that means that this instruction set architecture defines the some instructions used by computer hardware. So what are the, what are instructions? So what are the instructions? This is some actually the definition. This instruction defines the behavior or operation of computer hardware. So instruction set architecture defines the, the instruction, and then this instruction defines the operation of the hardware. So this instruction is the some contraction or protocol or promises between uh, hardware and software. So instruction set architecture uh, defines the some behavior, and then the supported instructions by hardware. And then the instruction set architecture also defines the so, uh, result of the instruction also defines the some basic uh, hardware structure. Uh, how can I say? So, for example, the number of general purpose registers or size of the registers are also defined by instruction set architecture. So, if the instruction set architecture is defined, then compiler also depends on this definition definition by the instructions and architecture as a compiler also assigns some hardware resources such as the uh, registers. And then under the instruction set architecture, there is the computer system organization. And so frequently we uh, mention this com organization is called the computer architecture or architecture of the uh, Mm, okay, uh, is a processor. So this is the hardware architecture, actually. And then under this layer, there is the, some real uh, implementation of the computer processor, such as the computer circuit, and then some like, conductor physics. So some the basic uh, device, the basic uh, semiconductor devices. So these are the uh, uh, layer of the computer systems. I I uh, repeat it again. And then, so instruction set architecture is located here. It's the some interface between hardware and software. So it's a design objectives of the instruction set architecture. So, so what, why instruction set architecture is important? And what is the design objectives of the instruction set architecture? So actually when I started this slide, so I mentioned that the, the ARM instruction set architecture is good for mobile devices because this is ARM processor has advantages advantages in power consumption issues. So what the, what is what does that mean? The instruction set architecture, so okay, ARM um, so instruction set architecture also um, determines the some characteristics of computer organization or computer hardware. Right? So actually, we can see that computer hard the property of the computer. Hardware depends on instruction set architecture. For example, the ARM is ARM instruction set architecture, ARM ISA, is good for 
Well, actually, the, is this ARM ISA is designed for some simple hardware, simple implementation of the computer processor. So, because of the, this property, the ARM processor is has advantages you know, on on the power consumption issues because the hardware implementation is simpler than the other Cisco uh, instruction set architecture, I say, like uh, x86. So the design, actually the computer hardware design uh, direction is, it uh, depends on the some instruction design of the instruction set architecture. So what is the design objectives? objectives so, so functionality and flexibility for OS and compilers. So actually the compilers need to also actually compli compilers uh, need to depend on the also instruction set architecture because the number of uh, general purpose registers or some other instructions are also defined by ISA. So functionality and flexibility of OS or compilers also, I said the implementation efficiency, hardware implementation efficiency, also is a very important. And then it that depends on the instruction set architecture, like a Cisco or RISC. And then another uh, important issue of the ISA is the backward compatibility. Compatibility is hard to pronounce. Is so. What is the backward compatibility? For example, x86, the x86 is actually originally designed in about uh, maybe 1970s. So, but x86 is still designed by, it's currently designed by Intel or AMD, and then Intel or AMD actually uh, added some other, many other instructions the x86 ISA. Also, the problem of the x86, x86 ISA is that this is the Cisco type instruction set architecture. So it's a complex, and it's very hard to implement. Actually, the decoder of the x86 is very complex and because the, the, the length or some uh, operation of the instruction set architecture is um, uh, more complicated than the risk time instruction set architecture. So what's the problem? Even though the Intel and AMD know that this the actually old x86 instructions are very inefficient for computer uh, hardware implementation and uh, some other issues like power consumption. But these companies cannot uh, Threw away the, these inst old instructions. Why? If the one is, one application is written in the, some old instruction, the, the current the current ISA need to support the, this this old uh, applications. So in order to support the, these old applications, the current instruction current ISA need to support the old instructions. So include the all area of old instruction set architecture. That is the backward compatibility. So that's the actual, <laughs> that's, I, I know that that is inefficient, but the company need to support the old instructions. So backward compatibility. That's why the computer actual decode of the x86 and then some uh, some, uh, some yeah, yeah, x86 is very complex or complicated. That's the problem for the uh, CPU manufacturer need to support uh, this very old instruction for backward compatibility. So this is uh, design objectives. Oh, 그래서 이게 <웃음> 사실 제가 인텔에서 이거 조금 일하긴 했는데 어쨌든 인텔 그 시뮬레이터를 보면은 굉장히 옛날 구조가 녹아 들어가 있습니다. 자, 이게 왜 들어가 있어야 되나고 그래서 아주 이름이라든지 뭐 이런 것들이 
옛날 구조에서 오리지네이트 된 그런 이름을 갖고 있고 좀 그런 사실 그게 쉽지 않아요. 그래서 끝까지 이제 지원을 해줘야 되기 때문에 뭐 쉽지는 않습니다. 그렇지만 은 어쩔 수가 없죠. 그 와중에 또 배럴 프로세서, 배로 프로세서 아키텍처를 개발을 해야 되는 거죠. 이게 소프트웨어 같지 않아요. Okay. And then let, uh, let's talk about the instruction types and the OPIC code. What is the OPIC code? So OPIC code design, uh, defines the, some behavior of the instructions and OPIC code uh, distinguishes the some type, of, type of the instructions. For example, there is the OPIC code for add instruction. Also, there is an OPIC code for the subtraction. And o p i c o d e for multiplication or division. So this, the so why? So it, it's actually, actually, uh, this o p i c o d e uh, distinguished uh, these uh, many instructions. So based on this o p i c o d e the decoder hardware is designed and implemented. Implemented. So let's see the uh, some classes of instructions. So the first common instruction is the. Integer arithmetic, arithmetic, and logic instructions. So, what is the integer arithmetic instruction? The arithmetic instruction is the kind of add or sub or multiply and division. And then these instructions are only handles the integer operands, not floating point. So, and then logical instruction is the some bitwise logical operations such as or and or n o r m a n So this is the logical operation. So this, these instructions are very common. And then I believe you, if you took the undergraduate computer course, and then these are, you are very familiar with the, this type of uh, an arithmetic or logical instru instructions. And then the another type is the floating point instructions. So what is different? So it's just the operands are different. Like a, a floating point instruction just handles the floating point up front. But we know that uh, compared to the integer, integer up front, the floating point up front is, a, is a, the size is long and then also is a complex. Actually, it's, it's not easy to implement with the hardware. And then some uh, execution unit also is the very, is a, the, is a very difficult to implement for the efficient floating point execution units. And then memory transfer instructions. So these memory transfer instructions uh, handles the data movement between memory and cache and register files. Uh, so, so we already know the load and store instructions. And then also other atomic instructions for synchronization like a test and send and swap instructions are So also the memory instructions. And then also important instruction in the computer system is the control instruction. What's the control instruction? So if you see the some uh, flow chart, you can find the uh, this type of uh, what is this? <laughs> so conditional branch. So so it's like a branch. If yeah, it's actually if true, then go to here, and then false, and then go to here. This is the control instructions. So control instruction change the flow of the this uh, uh, some in, flow of the uh, program or application. So so there are uh, actually uh, 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 some three. Uh, Like it's actually uh, in this textbook, uh, text, textbook introduced the three types of control instruction. The first type is the con uh, conditional branch. Conditional branch. What is the conditional branch? As I explained here, if the condition is true, then goes to the this direction. And if the condition is false, then goes to the, some other directions. It's the conditional branch. And so. By the true or false of the condition, the direction of the actually uh, the direction of the uh, this branch is changed. 
So how this branch instruction uh, uh, check the some conditions? So actually, this branch instruction can check the condition bits, like a G zero. I see what's carry, and <laughs> I don't know about the other other flags, and then uh, Intel. Uh, Intel or some ARM instruct ARM processors uh, depend on the, this condition and bit condition conditional bits to implement the conditional branch. Actually, this conditional bit like a CPSR is very famous in the ARM instruction set architecture. Also, the conditional branch can check the some values of the registers like the set less than. So, for example, the some branch instruction may check the, the value of the register file here, and if the, the value of the register file is zero, then goes to some other target or not. And then, so another compare another uh, uh, some methods is to compare the two uh, value of the two registers in the uh, branch instructions, like uh, mm, B, Q, R1, R2. So this branch instruction uh, check the equality of, equality of, equality of the R1 and R2. And then jump. Jump is, um, is called the unconditional branch. The jump uh, check the, any conditions or values and of the registers. The jump only goes to the, some target address, a target piece. And then JAL jump and link is used for the procedure call. So these are some three different kinds of the uh, condition con uh, uh, control instructions. So what is the four types? Integer arithmetic or logic instruction or floating point instruction, memory instruction, and control inst instruction. These are the uh, four types of instructions frequently used in com uh, com uh, used, used in used by instruction set common instruction set architecture. Okay, let's let's talk about the front of the instruction. What is the front? Is the some data used by instructions? The first type of front is the accumulator. So what is the accumulator? So just the, this, this is the accumulator. Like so, it's a new value, and the new value is accumulated by the some specific registers. So some this is, this is the time of the so it's a accumulator A and A and then this instruction reads the data from the some uh, the memory space and then it then it's like a A equal A plus uh, like a man. So reads the data from the memory space and then uh, add with the, some previous previous value of the accumulator. So it's a very similar to the some C operand plus echo. So this is the some accumulate this accumulator operand. And then stack. I so say we know that the stack is the temporary memory space for the some uh, process the call or uh, exception handling and some other purpose. And then, so actually, some spe special instructions uh, utilize the stack for the operation. So, this push instruction uh, defines the some stack area, and then just the stack instruction just uh, gives the add instruction. So. When this add instruction is required, uh, actually, actually issued, then this add instruction performs the operation between two uh, adjacent data uh, pointed by stack pointer. So if the, this data is uh, uh, pointed by the stack pointer, then this add instruction 
perform the add operation between the these two stack memory. And then some, like minus some <laughs> step. And then the the final result is update to the uh, the the memory space pointed by stack pointer. And then this data is popped by the pop instruction. And then registers instruction is a very actually it is a very common and uh, uh, familiar instruction or in the, uh, of the instruction set instructions. So what is the register? So register is the uh, some small uh, data space for the, some temporary uh, some, uh, temporary and small data space, and then this the speed of the register file is very fast, and the, but the size is very small. Actually, actually, as I said, the The number of the register file is defined by the instruction set architecture. And then, so this the data inside of the register can be used as the upfront of the instruction. Actually, this is very frequently used. <laughs> like uh, this load instruction and the add instruction. Destination is the register file. And then this is the, this is, uh, Instruction has the three up front, register file up front, it's a very common, the common form of the uh, load store instructions and architecture. <clears throat> so, actually, I said that the register file is defined by the instructions and architecture, and then so that, it mean, that means that the number of register file is defined by the uh, instruction set architecture. It's not physical. It's not physical register, it's just some uh, logical registers seen by users or compilers. So this register file is the limited resource and then it's a very precious resource because the number of register file and uh, actually number of logical register file is limited. The physical is same, actually the same. The compiler needs to apply some optimization technique to utilize the, this precious resource register file. Okay, some immediate upfront. This immediate is the some very small constant value. So this constant value can be included in the uh, instruction. Actually, the binary format of the instructions. Okay, upfront alignment. Okay. <clears throat> um, most of our CPU or most of our processor use the byte address. So that means that one byte is the base of the one kind of address one. But uh, this uh, memory instructions can uh, define uh, some size of the data. Like, uh, so, so this load instruction uh, handles the four different sizes of the data. So load, this is the load byte. It's a, it's a one, uh, it's a eight, eight bit, it's a load byte. And then load half word is a 16 bit, load word is a 32 bit, and the load double word is the 64 bit. So actually with, with uh, this uh, memory operation, we can, uh, uh, define the some size of the this uh, the data handled by the memory operation, and then so actually this is true for the uh, um, most of the instruction set architecture. So that means that the front of the size S must be stored at the address of that is multiple of S. That means that the date if the data is. Uh, Handled by the, this memory instructions, the address address pointed by this instruction should be aligned to the size of the data. So, for example, load word handles the 32 bit data, so the the address should be multiple of four. So, for example, so but 
like this one, no, 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 <laughs> this one, load word R1, address 10 is not supported by instruction set architecture, it's a, for the most of instruction set architecture. It's not true. Actually, it's not true for the risk five. Risk five support supports the unaligned uh, data data transfers, but for the most of the instructions and architecture, the the data should be aligned in the size of to the uh, size of the data handled by memory instructions. So. So here is the some example. Oops. So actually, uh, <laughs> the the when we uh, write the high level <coughs> programs with the high level language, and we just use the uh, variables uh, or arrays and or as arrays or pointers. But how this size of the problem is it decided? It's decided by the compiler. So compiler decide. Uh, actually, actually we, uh, when we use the C, then we can we know that we the the data size is also we can define. Uh, uh, we can set the data size, but also for the most of the uh, actually the memory position or memory address is defined by the compilers. So if the, this uh, data alignment is not supported by the hardware, the hardware uh, generate the exceptions, and then this, this should be handled by exception handler. And then this is the, some uh, representative address mode of the instructions and architecture. So actually this register and the immediate and then displacement is uh, very common in the RISC and CISC instructions. Actually, this register immediate displacement is common in the uh, RISC instructions. So you can find, you can see, uh, read uh, these uh, tables, and then uh, you can see what type of addressing mode exists in the instruction set. Uh, PC reality, PC reality. <laughs> okay, here, here, here. And direct or absolute is absolute here, and then memory indirect is here, and so you can find the meaning of the you know, some addressing mode. Okay, so actually, as I said, that uh, these three types are very common. Then, if you understand the, these three types. And maybe it's enough. Also, some other common case is the first here PC relative addressing mode. This PC relative addressing mode is frequently used by control instructions. Mm. So, can I skip here? Also, there's some complex instructions like. A, uh, in the indexed instruction or indexed addressing mode or indirect in, in addressing mode can be found in the CISC type instructions. But these CISC type instructions can be easily translated in the multiple instruction of uh, RISC type instructions. So for example, this is the memory indirect instruction, load word and R1, and then it's a indirect so it's the, the what, what is the meaning of this one? Is it uh, actually the indirect access by the R3? Is the the R1 is uh, fetched by the some data pointed by memory address of the the memory address uh, pointed by R3 is some indirect memory indirect. So for this instruction can be uh, translate into two load instructions. So first, the R3 is fetched by the some uh, some data pointed by the list R2, and then 
This R3 is also used for the memory address of the this uh, here, and then the R1 uh, receives the data from the the memory address stored in register R3. And then post increment is also easily implemented by the load word and the add i instruction. So actually this is very complex and actually this type of instructions like memory indirected and the post increment is done supported by CISC type instructions, not risk. So what is the um, what is different? Actually this CISC type instructions can be easily imp implemented by the risk time instructions here. The problem, not, not the problem, is that some disadvantage is that this if the instructions can be represented with the two different instructions, then these two different instructions will use the more register files. So compiler need to manage the this register files because I said that the rest file space is very precious, so that may be some disadvantage. But we already know that uh, computer actually the recently the most of the CISC computer has the risk-like hardware architecture. So I will explain later. Uh, so, so some <laughs> some car uh, some property of the uh, this. Uh, Mm, complex type CISC type instruction set. Okay, so number of memory operand in AL. This is also uh, some. So actually, there are some uh, different kinds of memory accesses in the, in the instructions. So let's consider the high-level language statement C equal A plus B. So when we use the, this statement in the high-level language, uh, then actually the, there are the three variables are used in the, this statement. So actually this data is stored in the main memory. So it's a main memory uh, pointed by address of A and then point to my address B, and, so, and then the data is stored in the main memory. Point to my address C is here. So how can we implement this uh, operation with the instructions? So I said that this data is uh, stored in the main memory. So actually the most of, uh, direct or some simple Implementation is the just directly access the memory space with the instructions. So like uh, add uh, here, here, add C A B. So in this instruction, C is the address of variable C. And the A is the address of variable A. B is the same. So this is the only some some. Uh, example of the instruction to implement the, this statement, high level language statement. But uh, <laughs> what is the problem? Actually, the address is the very long. And the address size is very long. So if we implement this type of instruction, then this instruction will occupy, actually, the size of this instruction format will be very large it's a long instruction here and then what's the pro another problem so actually this instruction directly access the, the memory space here and then uh, calculate the add instruction and then store the result of the add instruction to the main memory so the uh, So the partial results like uh, some data data fetch and so actually in the uh, data the partial result such as the data fetch is not stored in the computer processor. So if we want to reuse the this C 
again, if you want to reuse this the, the data stored in the memory address C, then we need to use the another memory access instructions. So that's the actually this advantage because uh, it's very it, it will take a very long time to access the main memory. So we can, so we can use, replace the we can use the one mem mem one memory operand and one register operand, and then we can use the uh, no no memory operand for the arithmetic, arithmetic instruction. Actually, this is very typical for the risk risk type instruction. And then this architecture is called the load store architecture. So what's the feature of a load store architecture? So data transfer and data movement is only performed by load and store instructions, not arithmetic or some logical instructions. That is the feature of a load store architecture. And then most of the risk type instructions uh, is uh, is implement uh, implement the load store architecture. So, actually, the data movement is only performed by the load instruction. So, the data is stored in the rest by here and then R2, and then the uh, we perform the R1 plus R2 equal R3 here, and then read the data from the R3 and then store it to the memory space memory memory space addressed by variable C. So what's the, actually compared to the this instruction, actually this instruction only used the one instruction and this and this this type instruction only we use the three instruction. Then what is the this load store architecture requires the four instructions. So compared to the, the previous cases, so one, three, four, this is the number of instructions. So we know that <laughs> the number of instructions is uh, larger than the some previous implementation, but uh, so what's the advantage of this type of instruction? Load or store architecture? Actually, the opposite of these two reasons. I said two, 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 two advantages. Audio is just simple, and then we can reuse the some partial part of operation. And then exception. So what is exception in the computer processor? It's an exception, <laughs> just the exception. Uh, it's not a common case, a very rare event uh, occur during the ex execution of the computer processor. So that's why this phenomenon or this is called the exception. So what's the some example of the exception? There's an IO event where some divided by zero and then uh, uh, overflow on the flow is that some kind of an exception. Okay, this exception include the uh, traps and then interrupt. Actually, the interrupt is the some external event generate outside of the CPU and then requires the CPU attention. attention. So, what is the some common example of exceptions? Like a keyboard typing or the mouse, it's the some common uh, uh, example of exception. Actually, for uh, uh, okay, the for mobile devices, if, if the computer system uh, frequently uh, interface it. Interface with uh, some user, real user in the real world, then this in interrupt may uh, influence the performance of the entire computer system. So 
So for example, if we frequently uh, use the some touch screen of the smartphone, then it may uh, influence the performance of the smartphone. But, but how about the server computer? The, the interaction between the user and the server computer is uh, it's rare compared to the mobile devices, but in this case, the exception is not critical for the performance. NetRaps is specially designed for handling system calls and breakpoints, something like that, debugging. So these are the examples of exceptions. IO device interrupt, and the operating system call is the trap. The breaking point is also a trap. And then the arithmetic exception, like a overflow was on the flow. And then the another so very important exception is the page fault. So we will handle, uh, we, we will learn about the page fault in the memory hierarchy part. Then this is a very, very uh, important exception. And this online memory accesses and the memory protection violation is a good, uh, actually, it's a critical for the security issues. And then hardware failure, alarms, and power failures. These are some hardware related exceptions. So, this, so how can this exception is handled by computer system? So this exception is a very rare case, it's a rare event. So hardware supports the small part of the exception, the exception handling, and then uh, and, uh, <coughs> and then some other operation is supported by the operating system, by software. So, but how do you need to support the some precise exception handling? So what is the precise exception handling? So when exception uh, happens, the ex exception hand the ex ex some instruction is here. So this is the some instruction flow. Let's just start from the So this is some instruction flow, like uh, add, sub, multiply, divide, add, sub, multiply, and divide. So these are the instructions, and the instruction executed from top to bottom sequentially here. But let us assume that the exception happens during the execution of the multiply. Like, uh, um, overflow or on the flow. So how does how the exception is handled by the computer hardware and operating system? So when the exception is happens on the during the execution of the some instruction, then the computer hardware need to cancel the op, uh, execution of the, this current instructions, but so if we, the is the pipeline architecture or some out of the process architecture, the how do your processor need to complete the operation of the previous instructions like such as the sub or add instructions? So that's why the hardware implementation of the precise exception is very difficult. So the computer hardware need to cancel the all related uh, execution by this multiply instruction or divide or add on the following instruction like a divide add sub instruction. So this divide add sub instruction may change the some part of the pipeline registers or some uh, other register files, physical registers of the out of the processor. But if the exception handles the the hardware, the computer hardware need to revoke the, these changes in the processors. And then, but, and then computer hardware also complete the uh, execution of the previous instruction. So the first cancels the some operation by the, the next instruction and then complete the 
execution of the previous instruction. And then the computer the operating system calls the, the appropriate appropriate uh, exception handler. So some, some pro, it's very similar to the procedure call, but uh, when the exception handling is completed, then the hardware also resume the execution of the, the following instructions. So actually this revoke and resume should be supported by hardware. And then so for actually it, it may be easy not and then uh, doable if the computer hardware only uh, handles the single thread operation or some inner the processing, but or out of the processing or some uh, SMT like simulated multiprocessing. So if the computer processor handles the multiple thread at the same time, then this precise ex exception is very difficult to implement with the hardware. So sometimes some hardware uh, relates to some difficulty of this uh, exception implementation. So some hardware only support the uh, Hardware to, some hardware uh, supports some approximated exception handling. Uh, encoding the ISA is uh, so what is the encoding? So encoding the ISA means the, the representing the instructions instructions for with the binary data form. So it's actually it's very uh, different for the risk and the CISC data type. For most of the risk instruction, risk time instructions support the fixed length instructions. For example, how about ARM or ARM or RISC 5 support the 32 bit length instructions. instructions. Well, sometimes the ARM supports the 16 bit instructions, such as the thumb, thumb, thumb instruction is the size of 16 bit, but most of the risk instructions, risk type instructions support the fixed size instruction. So, the hardware decoder is simple in this case, but other instructions, such as risk type instruction, support the uh, variable length instructions like uh, x86 or x. So, so for, for example, the x86 may have the one byte uh, sized instruction or very long sized instructions. So let's talk about CISC and RISC and CISC. So you should know the so uh, definition of the risk and risk and risk risk and risk is the complex instruction set computers. The risk is the reduced reduced instruction set computer. It's not related to the implementation. It's related to the instruction set, not hardware implementation. So I said that the so risk is actually the risk. This is simple, and then this is complex. So actually, the risk is very good. Actually, the instruction set architecture is uh, the risk is a risk risk time instruction. Then, how, uh, implementing the instruction decoder is uh, simpler than the six type instructions. So. The risk type instruction is a what is the some common feature of the risk type instruction? What is feature? You have fixed length, and then load store architecture. It's just some common feature of the risk type instructions. Then that means that the Cisco has the variable length of instructions. 
and then the some instruction like add a b c can access the memory space directly by the this add instruction. So this is this for the CISC type instruction is not easy to implement with the simple hardware. So recently the CISC type processors such as the x86, the CISC type processor like x86 also has the risk like risk like hardware. So what does that mean? Risk like hardware. So how can we uh, support the, this operation of the very complex instructions by CISC type instructions? So this CISC, so recently the most of the CISC architecture is the micro micro machine. So this micro machine uh, translate the CISC instructions into the multiple simple instructions. So this is the example of the add CAV. So it's this add instru this instruction uh, directly access the uh, memory space and then perform the add instructions through the result to the memory uh, main memory directly. And then we already uh, mentioned that this instruction can be implemented with the four simple instructions. So main idea of this microcode is that oh, this CISC type of complex instructions can be translated into multiple simple instructions. Then these multiple simple instructions can be executed by simple RISC-like hardware, even though the instruction type is the CISC. So, an example, so the so add CAB is the a program, you know, to update the program count of the micro machine, then load instruction, add instruction, and store instruction, then jump to the opcode. So, this is the, some example of the micro code by CISC hardware. Yeah, yeah it's very. <laughs> uh, mm. So, yeah, I know, you know, I know this is not, this, this implementation does not look efficient, but the, this, the x86 need to support the old instructions uh, for the backward compatibility, backward compatibility issue. So, even though the CISC, 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 uh, 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 exploit depends on the, some risk like hardware and the CISC need to support the, the some complex instructions with the, this micro code act structure. <laughs> it's not efficient but ish. the computer computer hardware should be implemented like this. Yeah, this this table uh, summarized the, some very uh, popular ISAs in the in the real world. So x86 and then system uh, 370 is the some CISC type instructions. And then I believe you don't know about the Motorola uh, <laughs> 680,000 processor. This is also sometimes. Actually, this processor is used by Apple. Uh, the people Apple uh, used the uh, Intel processors. So this is uh, some kind of uh, example of CISC instructions. And then some Spark, PC, and Alpha, MIPS. It is the example of the risk instructions. And what is the IA64? So, this IA64 is the risk instruction uh, developed or uh, designed by Intel. Actually, Intel uh, tried to redesign the, their in instructions and architecture for the 
64-bit computers with the risk time. But uh, some compiler issue and then some backward uh, uh, compatibility issues, this IA64 is not used widely. Actually, it is retired recently. It was retired recently. And then AMD uh, actually de developed or uh, designed the x86 64 instruction set architecture. Is the, and so recently, the most of the uh, uh, AMD or Intel processors used the uh, x86 64 ISA for 64 bit computer, computer processor. But this Itanium IA64 ISA is, was retired. So it's a very interesting. And then the recently, the UC Berkeley, the David Patterson, uh, uh, the UC Berkeley uh, designed the RISC V instruction set architecture. This is the open source uh, ISA, and then uh, some academia and in the industries uh, have very uh, much interest in the, this RISC V instruction set architecture. And then these tables uh, summarize the, some instructions used to, in the textbook. So textbook here. Uh, so if you actually is a very uh, simple, uh, actually some very small number of instructions are used by this used in the textbook. So if you memorize the, this simple instruction, then you can understand. Uh, some code assembly code and then hardware, hardware implementation uh, shown in this textbook. So I will complete the. Uh, I will stop here and and then so I will. I I quickly uh, explain about the instruction set architecture of the computer processor. So. So if you have any questions, it's post to your questions on the Piazza or Blackboard. So, um, and then and then next time I will uh, cover the some real hardware implementation or process architecture uh, of the CPU. Okay. See you later. Yes, good morning, Smna. 어, 아, 인스트럭션 셀 아키텍처는 제가 이렇게 좀 빠르게 설명을 했는데요. 어, 어쨌든 제가 하드웨어 구조에 대해서 설명을 하기 위해서는 어, 여러분들이 이 텍스트북에서 쓰이는 인스트럭션즈에 대해서 이해를 하고 있어야 되기 때문에 퀵클리 설명을 했습니다. 음, 사실은 우리가 이제 언더그레이즈 코스에서는 그냥 뭐 리스크 타입, 뭐 밉스라든지 뭐 ARM 이런 risk type instructions를 대부분 배워서 뭐 어떻게 생, 어떤 타입은 좀 생소할 수가 있는데 음, 뭐 그래도 음, 여러분들이 이제 뭐 데스크탑으로 뭔가 이제 프로세서 내부를 들여다본다든지 아니면 좀더 더 어드밴스드한 프로세서를 이제 들어보게 될, 때, 될, 때, 될 때에는 어떤 다른 타입의 인스트럭션들도 가끔 아주 가끔 나올 수 있기 때문에 좀 설명을 했습니다. 네, 그러면은 뭐 인스트 IS 인스트럭션 셋 아키텍처에 대한 설명은 여기서 마치고요. 다음에 뵙도록 하겠습니다. 네, 수고하셨습니다.